Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Very, very exciting spider today. We are going to rehouse a red fanged wandering spider. Now, you might have seen, these have been quite popular of late. Um, they've not been in the hobby a huge amount of time and very, very little is known about them. In fact, pretty much zilch is known about them. Now, these are a spider that are in the same family as the Brazilian wandering spider, and uh, they really do need to be treated with some respect. Now, these guys have got a reputation for being extremely fast and extremely defensive. So we will find out just how this spider behaves soon enough. So what we're gonna do now is we are, as you can see, well, you might not be able to see actually, but I've just had my hand on the box here and this spider is reacting to my hand straight away. And it's not reacting in a nervous way. She's actually come to have a look to see what the hell's going on. So this could be a very, very interesting spider. And uh, not one for novices. This is a spider that really does need some uh, careful consideration. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move her over there, out of the way. Now we've got two of these, two females, and um, hopefully we can pick up a male at some point, and uh, all being well, have a go at breeding them. I think that'd be quite an exciting thing. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna house a, I was in two minds to be fair, whether we put her in a 20 by 20 by 30 XO and see how she goes. This is, in fairness, quite a small enclosure, not for the spider, it's plenty, plenty big enough for the spider, but it doesn't allow us very much wiggle room. We've got very little wiggle room. So should this spider decide to um, take things into her own hands, we're gonna be quite restricted in what we can do. Now, the other option was to go to one of our 30 by 30s, which you would have remembered um, we kept our fishing spider in which was a large, large spider, similar sort of um, thing, not quite as fast as these, but very, very quick, nowhere near as aggressive. So um, we could have gone with one of them, or the other option is to maybe go for a 30 by 30 by 45 Exoterra, which will give us plenty of room in which to work and see how these spiders are. But today, we're gonna try it in here, and we're just gonna see how we get on. Now, these guys come from Guinea in North, North Africa. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use, use some clay balls in the bottom of this, and this is gonna give me the humidity. These guys do like a humid environment. So, we're gonna put our bit of cloth down there, and hopefully, hopefully we can set up a really, really nice enclosure. Now, because so little is known about these, this is gonna be a bit of a trial and error. I personally have not kept these before. Um, I have kept the Brazilian wandering spider in the past. And um, although they have a notorious reputation, I've got to be honest, I didn't find them that bad. Although they have got a very, very potent bite. But treated with care, like everything, we can get around this type of um, defensiveness. We can avoid it in many of our spiders just purely by the way we deal with things. And hopefully that same theory is gonna work with this girl today. We will see, we will see. Fingers crossed, nothing's guaranteed. Right then. So we're gonna literally, we're just gonna have a bit of our beastie mix. Again, this is all from the from the wild, you know that now. You know, we collect everything from the wild. We can take out anything we don't want. These are just cones, that's all they are. But they get in my way, so that's the only reason I take them out. Right, I'm gonna put that in there. Now, there's a little bit of confusion as to whether these guys are arboreal or terrestrial. And I would hazard a guess that they are pretty much both. 
So that is the theory that we are going to work on. Now, wherever we go, I think we're going to go with this end. So what we're going to do, this is a nice little tip for you. This wood here, this is something that I've collected from the woods. And as you can see, it's still got all the stuff on it. There really is no, look how natural that is underneath. Yeah, there really is no need. I still see people putting up posts. Do I need to dry things out? Do I need to microwave them? You don't. This is what you want. You want it as fresh as possible. As fresh as possible. So, good little tip. This is the piece we're going to want to use. So we can check out our, our size. We can put this up against here like this. And this is going to give us a marker as to where we need to cut it. Well, we're going to cut it around about here. Because we've got a fair bit of substrate in there. So we're going to cut it there. We've got our saw. No, we're going to try and save our fingers today. Although, to be fair, I've got a feeling I've got bionic fingers now. They're so used to being chopped up and scratched and God knows what. I think I'm impervious to it anyway. Right. So we're literally going to put it on there. You can see how soft that wood is. Very, very fresh. See how that just snapped off? Lovely. So then now, what we can do now, you see how that? We've almost got our size already. And being quite flat, there you go, see? Just by measuring it, we can get that to fit exactly where we want it to go. Look at that. You see? That in there like that. We've got our backing board on the back as well to give this spider a little bit of security. Hopefully it's going to make her settle down a little bit better. Got a nice little bit of moss on here. This is literally just to make it look nice. That's all we're doing here. That little bit of moss, it just makes it look nice. And we've got plenty of it to choose from. Now we've got a plant here as well. So I'm thinking maybe yeah, we're going to put the plant in that corner. So this is just a regular garden plant from the garden centre. And what we're going to do. It's very dry. I'm going to tease it out. We're going to get our bin. And we're just going to tease off some of this stuff. We don't need it. And we're just going to open these roots up a little bit. This will help the plant establish itself. Now we quite, we're always getting asked, what plants can I use? I don't want to use the wrong plants. There is no wrong plants, in my opinion. Any, anything that's small enough that isn't going to grow absolutely huge is going to be reasonably okay within your enclosure. I just use any, any of the um, house plants that I like the look of, and they all do a decent job. They're perfectly fine. Right, I'm going to get that in there. Now, what we're doing here, all this is doing, this is all about giving this spider a sense of security and that is all it is and it makes the tank look pretty as well but primarily the whole thing is about giving this got this spider a sense of security so that it doesn't freak out and act like an absolute idiot that's the plan anyway right so what we're going to do now i want to put another piece in here so i'm going to go for that we're going to cut that there I'm going to try and, I want to try and fill in that gap that's at the back. This is absolutely lovely timber. So all we do is we literally cut it through and then we can just snap it off. You see? Very, very pretty stuff this. So we're going to Stick this one in here. All right, how's that looking? There we go. Now we've got a bit of a background. Our spider, as you can see, can get right down in the back here and it can disappear behind there where it's nice and dark. And hopefully, 
it will feel a little happier. So we're now going to get, we've got some moss here. Sorry, am I diving about? You're doing my <laughs> Stay with it, camera lady. You're doing fine. Right, now we've got some moss here. Now this is another thing. This came up recently, I saw on um, Facebook. And people were like, you know, I want to go out and collect some moss. When I get it, do I wash it? Do I nuke it? All the goodness that is in this when it is freshly collected is what you want. There's isopods, there's all sorts of little creepy crawlies inside this, and it's exactly what you want. So why on earth would you want to kill them? I don't understand. You know, we've got to get away from this mentality that there's stuff here that's going to harm our spiders. There's nothing here that's going to harm our spiders. I've been using this for so many years now, I never had any issues and I think one of the things that's happened in the past is people have for argument's sake they've gone and got a piece of moss they put it into their spider enclosure and then a week later their spiders died and they're like that's that bloody moss that's got to be the moss it's the only thing I've changed well as we know in the spider hobby spiders can just literally keel over for no apparent reason whatsoever and we have no idea as to why they've died. And we're still scratching our heads weeks later. It doesn't mean the moss killed it. You know, the chances are it was going to happen anyway. So, you know, don't get hung up. It's really not a problem. Right, I think that's looking rather nice. You're going to keep it steady. Going to keep, going to keep it, yep, go on then. I, I keep moving it around, don't I? So I'm thinking now... We're going to leave this as it is. We're not going to put any more in there because this spider is going to um, have the opportunity to run around and do its thing. And I'm thinking to myself, the less we have in the way, the better it's going to be. Until we find out how this spider is going to work, how it's going to react, what is it going to do? So what we're missing now is we want a water bowl. So I think we can put that in there like so. Yeah, we'll get that in the back there. Got our hot glue gun's been rimming away peacefully on its own there. There we go. So we're going to get that in there. We're literally going to put that in there. So, remember as soon as we put the cold water on it, that's it, job done. Get some water in there. We're going to water our plant. Now bearing in mind, because we've got the clay balls in there, we can afford to get a bit of water into the bottom of this enclosure. We can literally fire up them balls. And then ideally, with the warmth in the room, this will slowly, slowly come up. And we can just monitor it, keep an eye on it. So what we're doing now is we are basically priming the bottom of the tank. So you notice by doing it this way, we're not soaking the whole tank. We don't want it all wet. We're just looking at priming the base. So we can do that. You can see that water running down in the bottom there. That's nice. Right, that will do. Now then. Now normally, we would keep the lid off. I'm just wondering, hmm. right, should I keep the lid off? I'm going to move my hot glue gun for a start. Only because if she does jump out, I don't want her getting stuck on the hot glue gun. Right. 
Here we go. One spider. Now then, I think we're going to leave the lid off. We are going to see what we can do. And we're going to get a true indication of what this spider is actually like. Now we've got our catch cup. Because I've got a feeling we might well need it. Now bearing in mind, inside the room here, this is a controlled environment and we can pretty much get away with all sorts of things in here. Now if this spider does for whatever reason end up disappearing into the room, we can still deal with it. We can still catch her up. It's just all it really is, is an inconvenience. It's not the end of the world. Right, that being said, she is now on the lid. Which is not very helpful, because we didn't really want her on the lid. But as you can see, she's quite calm at the moment. She's a lovely big female. Right, now she's gonna go down onto the floor. I'm hoping she's just going to freeze so that we can get a nice look. Now these guys, as we said in the beginning, are classed as medically significant. There is no real um, literature on them. Right, you might want to step so you can go a little bit higher. Beyond. Right, here we go. You see in there? So we're just going to take the lid off and we're just going to have a little look at the moment. Now, as you can see there, she's hunkered down. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to turn her around. So I'm going to put the lid back down. I'm just going to pop it back down nice and gently. We don't want to, we don't want to freak her out. And we're going to turn this around so you guys get to see her from the front. There we go. And we go back off with the lid, nice and gently. You really don't want to upset her. Now, as you can see there, you'll have a lovely, lovely view inside there. And you can see how they get their name, the Red Fangs. Now, I don't know if this will make any difference. Maybe a little bit of light. Does it make any difference to her? Yeah? So we're looking, as we said earlier on, these are related to the uh, Brazilian wandering spider, which just about everybody in the hobby has heard of the Brazilian wandering spider. And these guys behave in a very, very similar way. Now, in the past, when we've dealt with Brazilians in the past, they are what I class as a thinking spider. So these guys literally, it's almost like they sit and they watch you and they think about what's going to happen. And here you go. You see, she's moving now. She's just getting rearranged. This, what she's doing now, this is like her pokey stance. So she's literally hunkered down and she's just hoping that we haven't noticed her. Now we're going to treat this girl the same as we would a Brazilian wandering spider or the same as we would our Cupriana Saley. You remember we've had them in the past in the Beastie Room. And again, they're another spider that is, um, has got a, quite a fearful reputation for their bite and things like that. And, and their actual um, willingness, willingness, willingness to actually defend themselves. So we have to be very, very careful. And they are incredibly fast. So should they decide to, um, you know, make a lunge or run or do whatever, it's all going to happen really, really quickly. Right, so I think what we're going to do, we've, gotta be, we've just got to be so careful. So we're going to put the lid back on. And as you've seen there, she's absolutely perfectly happy at the moment. So what we're going to do now, 
we are going to put our box here. We're going to take our lid off. Now this could go either way. What we're going to do here today, this is not what I suggest you do. I'm quite used to dealing with these sorts of things, so it's, um, it's a totally different thing. If this was your spider at home, what I would suggest, one, it would have come in a nice small pot. And I would suggest you literally just take the lid off the pot, put the pot in the enclosure, and allow your spider to wander out in its own time, and then you can retrieve the pot in the morning. These are very, very nocturnal spiders. So they tend to, you know, hide away during the daytime. So I would allow your spider to make its own way out. A much, much safer way of doing things. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna try, we're gonna see how she reacts. We're gonna see if we can get her to walk up and come into this enclosure. She might well just bolt, but we will see. We will find out. Now. You'll also notice there that we've put the tub on the floor. This is because if I was to hold the tub, if she bolts out, it will be drastically fast. And the chances are she may well bolt straight out of the tub, run up my arm, disappear in my shirt, do whatever, which I don't really want. So we're gonna have it all on the floor. And if she bolts, I'd rather she run around the desk than run around me. So what we're gonna do now, you ready? We're literally just going to touch her very, very gently. We're just going to see how she reacts. Look at that. You see now she bit the brush. So what we're going to do now, we're going to walk her very, very gently. You are such a good girl. There you go. And there's our red fang wandering spider. Has put herself in the enclosure. And as you can see there, She's tucked herself down in a bit of darkness. You can see the idea of the plant now. It's given her that little bit of security. And by having that security, we didn't get any of the crazy behavior. It actually gave her somewhere to go. I don't think we can see around the side. It's a shame she's actually gone into the dark part. Now I don't know if we can, we might push our luck, but we might just be able to get her come back out. This is an interesting thing because we're just, we're just working out temperament now. We're just gonna see what kind of temperament she's got. She's actually, there she is. You can see she's coming round now. As you can see there, we're not getting any of this aggression. And this is because of the way that we're actually we're dealing with her. We're using the same techniques that we use with all of our tarantulas. We try and maintain that contact when we touch them. You get that initial like um, shock reaction where she sort of bit the end of the brush. You notice we use the, um, the brush end of it this time round, so it's nice and soft. So should she bite it, she's only gonna bite into the bristles. It's nothing serious. And you can see there where she's tucked herself down again. Now, that's what it was, yeah. Very, very well behaved spider. Now this, although we've actually had what we can class as a handling success, you may well remember when we done our Cupriana Salis, you would have remembered when I paired them I moved them around with a brush and I positioned them and got them where we wanted them to be. And we managed to move them from one enclosure to another just by using the brush. And we didn't get any bolting. 
They were perfectly, perfectly well behaved. This girl's done exactly the same. And this is all down to the fact of how we approach the, the problem, you know, how we approach the situation. And as you can see there, she's literally, she sat there, she's allowed us to actually move her back out a little bit, and she's been perfectly fine. We're not going to do any more with her. We've, we've proved a little thing to ourselves about her temperament. And, and this is an important thing. Here she goes. Look, she's having a little fidget around now. She will, in fact, just move on her own accord. As she settles, she'll get a little bit more adventurous. Yeah, but Steve, but she's, she's literally just tucked herself in a little bit. No, this is her head. What are you? Yeah, she's actually facing me. So yeah, so this is this is um, by no means by watching this video, do not put yourself in a false sense of security about how these spiders react. They are absolute. Here she comes. They are absolutely ferociously fast. Here she comes. Look at that. What a wonderful, wonderful spider. Yeah, you know, she felt that little bit of vibration as you leant on the desk then. And there she goes. Look at that beautiful abdomen. Yep, she's had enough. Yep, she's slowly finding her way around and she's going to tuck herself away. <laughs> Lovely job. Yep. So then, if you do have one of these spiders, don't get lulled into a false sense of security. This went really, really well. We've been playing with these types of spiders for many, many years. And, um, you know, it just shows that they can be done. There is a way of dealing with them in a nice, gentle way without getting all the fuss and trouble. But that being said, these are really not for beginners. You know, you really do need to be relatively, you know, well relaxed with your spiders. You'll see many people play around with these guys and they're very nervous because they're fearful of their reputations. And that is when the trouble starts. So if, you know, don't jump in. As much as these are exciting spiders to have, you know, get some experience first and then eventually you'll end up playing around with these guys as well. Because, you know, they're not so bad in, in good hands, absolute nightmare in bad hands. So just bear that in mind. What a wonderful spider. That's a really, really pretty spider. And uh, we've got one more to rehouse, which we will do at a later date. Um, but we will do exactly the same sort of setup. It obviously paid off putting it in the smaller enclosure. We were thinking about going big because of the reputation. But again, although we've known nothing of this particular spider, what we can do is we can adjust it to other spiders that are in a similar family. And this is something we often get asked. I often get people message me, how do I look after this? I can't find any literature on it. Look at the spider and look at what other spiders are out there that are very similar, either similar in habitat, similar in the same country they come from, things like that. And often or not, you can use the same principles for that spider, just as we've done here, exactly the same principles. So, you know, these are all things that you want to be thinking of and working out when you pick up a brand new spider that's got no, no knowledge, no, no information whatsoever. So we will just learn from now on and we will find out the little intricacies of this spider. Fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Right then, I've spoke enough. I hope you enjoyed that. Camera lady's arms are falling off and uh, it's time for a cup of tea. So don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and I will see you soon, guys. And don't forget, don't forget, it's the Taunton Show on Sunday and we, the Beastie Room, have got a table. First one ever. So we are going to be there, and I hope to see as many of you as possible. So the Taunton Show this Sunday. Don't forget. Right in. I'll see you soon, guys.